welcome to the video today guys I wanted to do something a bit different and for those of you guys who don't know I went to school for video game development and the last job I had was just general app development on mobile so I haven't actually done anything game development related in a while and I wanted to get back into it because it's something that I personally enjoy and I think it would be interesting for people to learn. So if you guys have been interested in game development, learning kind of how games are made, kind of what happens behind the scenes, but you've never known where to start, you know, because there's so many toolkits out there, so many different resources you can use, I personally will recommend a product called GameMaker Studio. You can get a free version of this, which is quite useful. You really won't be able to do anything other than than basic Windows games, like games for Windows. But that's perfectly fine because it's all about learning. And if you ever decide that you want it to learn, do more with it, it is possible, although there are better alternatives to it. But it is quite easy to use. So that is why I picked up GameMaker Studio as opposed to a different tool set because it's easy to use and if you don't want to invest the money for something or invest the amount of time it would be required to learn something then this is a good place to start to determine if this is something you want to learn so anyway I will have a link to the download for this in the description so once you've downloaded it once you've installed it once everything is done that is where I'm starting from so when you first start it up, this is what you're going to see. You're going to actually, this isn't what you're going to see actually. If you start it up for the first time, you're going to get a, a window for signing in or signing up for an account. So go through that process, you know, get your account, get your free license activation key. Once that's all done, this is what you will see. So starting from here, you are going to click new and we're going to pick up a new project. I'm just going to name it Intro to Game Maker. So that's basically what this is. All I'm really going to do is go over the interface and at least how to get something running. So starting here at the top we have of course your file, edit, window, resources, scripts, run, account, marketplace beta personally this is newer to studio than what I've used it is pre prior to game maker studio the last thing I used was game maker 7 so there's a, some new stuff here that we're not really gonna touch too much on at least not yet player beta and help but all this stuff up here we're not really gonna touch yet so just going on this toolbar we have new game open game save game and then we have create executable which will create a little distri little I guess you call it a redistributable that when you make a game you can create a little a little exe and then you can give that to other people if you want them to test it out or play it or whatever so that's what this little button does we have run the game and run as debug generally I, I just use this but these are pretty much the same except this one will give you debug information while you're running it we have stop the game and clean the game which is something that we'll talk about later because at right now it might not make too much sense but just know that this just cleans you know project assets and such we and then these right here starting at this point are going to be the main things we're going to be using we have create a sprite sound background path script shader font timeline object and room now the only thing here, the only ones here that we're really not going to touch for a while are going to be these two. Scripts and shaders. Because GameMaker is a very easy to use tool because everything in here is drag and drop. So you don't actually have to know how to program, you don't know how to code or anything going into this. However, scripts are actual pieces of code you would write. And shaders are another piece of actual code you would write so those two we're not really going to touch yet this we have uh, global settings that's what it was 
global settings. You mess with global settings for everything. We're just going to leave everything default. And then we have help. Here in the help, when you open it up, you get the documentation or you can read and search a bunch of different topics. And I would say go through this whenever you can, you know, just read here and there. Learn a lot of stuff in, in this. So then these five, these folders are just basically like, like a regular folder on your computer. These are just going to be where things are stored. And as we had starting here, Sprite going down to room, we have the same thing starting at Sprite going down to room. So Sprite, sound, background, path, script, shader, font, timeline, object, room. And then we have these last three, which are really things we are not going to touch because you don't really need to. So we're just, I'm not even going to explain these because they're just, you don't need to mess with these. So as you can imagine, sprites, any images, sounds, backgrounds, like your background images, paths, which are things that like, say for example, you, if you remember stuff like Mario, where you have platforms that will follow a specific path, same thing. Scripts and shaders, like I mentioned, they're actual pieces of code you would write. Fonts, which self-explanatory, any fonts you use to draw, to draw text. Timelines. These are a little bit different as what they are is, say for example, you want something to happen maybe 30 seconds into a game. Will you write that into a timeline and basically place that event at 30 seconds? So you, you can you use a timeline to basically set up when events will happen. Objects, which are basically everything in your game from your player your enemies, bullets, platforms, whatever. Everything is an object that you interact with. And then finally, rooms, because you can have all all your assets set up, but if you don't have a room, your game doesn't run because your room is your level. All of your levels are inside rooms. So, just so basically just a quick rundown of what everything is so next what we're gonna do because I'm sure you don't want to just leave this as is so as you can see you click run it says game must have at least one room to run so that's what we're gonna do we're simply going to click this button up here to create a room now the room it creates you can zoom in and out and then you can use this you click and move it around to pen so as you can see this room has different things you have tiles which you can kind of like what you remember in older games where you have a tile sheet and you can tile everything so and you have settings which are like for example you have your width and height the speed this right here speed is your frame rate so you can see it's at 30 that means the game is going to run at 30 frames per second. If we move that to 60, the game will run at 60 frames per second. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it at 30. Then persistent and clear display buffer with a window color. This stuff is all things we're not going to touch. It's more it's stuff that we'll discuss more later on. But for right now, you don't have to know what that is. And then, of course, the name of this room. We're just going to leave it as is for now objects this is anything that you can place within your room backgrounds you know background images views now views are another thing that we're going to talk about in another video so for right now just think of this entire room as our view so for right now just think of the entire room as our view because currently we're seeing everything in the room when we get to maybe making platformers then we'll talk about what the view is and how it's different from the room itself. And then physics. You can set gravity, the direction, and such. So, so you, we'll mess with these later on. For right now, not too important. Just remember that you can add physics to your room. So just going to leave it as is for now. So that's the room. So if we hit run, since now that we have a room, and as you can see, nothing, because we haven't placed anything yet. So what do we want to do? First, we want to create a sprite. 
So you're going to click the little sprite button, the little Pac-Man, and it's going to create this. And what this is, is this is basically just settings for your sprite. But seeing as over here, this window is the preview of our sprite. But as you can see, we have no sprite. And you can either load in a sprite if you have like, say you have an artist who, who drew up a sprite for you. You can hit load, but that but we don't have one. So we're just going to hit edit. And as you can see, we get a little window here. This would be a list of sprites, kind of like a sprite sheet if you were going to add animations. But we don't have that. So we're just going to create this little blank paper to create a new sprite. It'll ask us for the dimensions. We're going to make it 64 by 64, so it's a little bit bigger. And we're going to hit OK. Now you get a blank sprite. Because I'm sure as you guys are aware, this checkerboard pattern is basically the basically means there's nothing here. So we're going to double click that and it's going to open up an image editor, which as you can see is a very basic form of an image editor, which is perfectly fine because when you're making simple games like this, you would generally have someone making a sprite for you and you would just import your sprites. So this doesn't need to be too fancy. And personally, I like to have grid lines. And if you're wondering, you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And then right here is the show a preview basically. Just gonna leave that off. Which if you saw it down here, shows you a little preview of what the sprite will look like. You can leave that on or off if you want. Then you have set this back to original zoom, zoom out, or zoom in. And then, of course, you have your cut, copy, paste, you know, undo, redo, you know, new sprite, open sprite. I think this one is open image. This one is open image. So basically, those are both to open something then you have save so if you want if you create a sprite and you want to save it for later you can save it as an image and then pull it back in later on but for right now we're just gonna make a very basic image I'm gonna right click on this and as you can see it fills in the right if you left click it fills in the left so I'm just gonna use a basic circle and then of course you have a bunch of different things here like opacity with the how you want stuff to blend and whatever but we're not gonna mess with anything just yet because I just want a simple circle so I'm gonna hit OK now we have a simple purple circle hit OK and then we just have a circle and then I'm just gonna hit OK because I don't want to do anything fancy with it yet we're just trying to get something working so once you have a sprite, how do you put it into your room? Well, you have to put, create an object first. Because you can't just put sprites into a room. You have to put objects into a room. So we're going to create an object. And first thing we have to do is tell this object to use this sprite. So when in the game, this is what your object is going to look like. Or this is what this object will look like. And then all of these different settings we're not going to touch those yet we'll explain what those are later because like i said we just want to get something working for now and this is a list of events so for example if i click it we have a create event which is when this object is created when this object is destroyed when an alarm goes off a step is like i mentioned before or actually i don't think i mentioned this um if you remember the room speed which we looked at earlier the room speed was 30. Well, you might know that as a frame rate, which is every every second you have 30 frames. Well, that is exactly what a step is in Game Maker. It's a frame. So when the game is 30 frames per second, Game Maker reads it as 30 steps per second. So that's just every time a frame updates. So that's all a step is collision when it collides with something when you do something with the keyboard when you do something with the mouse 
other events you know so there's just a different list of events that can happen for right now we just want a mouse event and we just want a left button meaning when we left click this object and then over here is a list of actions because you put actions into an event so we can create any number of events and then each of those events can have their own list of actions and that's how you get stuff to happen so what do we want to happen when we click this sprite well for to make it real simple we're gonna go down to main 2 and we're gonna click this and drag this into the actions and we're gonna just type in here circle clip so we're gonna hit OK so when this button is left click or when, when this button when this object is left clicked we're just gonna display a message that says circle clicked and that's it so then we're gonna hit OK so now that we have an object and we have it assigned to a sprite how do we put that into our room well when you open up your room you go over to objects and you will see your object so if you click anywhere you'll see a list of objects that you've created over here so since object 0 is the only object we have that's the only one we're gonna see and now to put that into the game we're just gonna left click anywhere in the game and it will drop that object for us and we're gonna hit OK and then we're gonna run it again and now as you can see we have a purple circle in the screen so if we click it we're just gonna get a message that says circle clicked okay click it again so that's basically all we've done so far and so if you want to add more objects to your game you can do that go back over to objects and then you can just place objects to wherever you want to put them and then we hit okay run it one more time and now as you can see we have we just have objects all over the place and because each of them has that click object associated with them it doesn't matter which one we click because they they all have the same action so that is how you create so that that so that is basically just your introduction to the layout the introduction to the different tools we use in game maker for right now and how to make a room and add an object to it so for right now that's all I really want it to do in the next video we will actually start making something very simple so hopefully you guys will be back for that and hopefully you guys enjoyed this and hopefully you guys will come back for more because I like like I said before I like this engine I think it's very cool it's very simple which is great because then you don't have to invest a lot of time into it so you can quickly decide if this is something you want to play around with more or if you want to look into something else but anyway thank you guys for watching this video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did do make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video